I want to go over the idea of the electrolysis of a solution of potassium iodide. So here we have a petri dish and in there there is some water and there's potassium iodide dissolved and we've also added a little bit of phenolphthalein. Um, we're using for a power source here a 9 volt battery and you might be able to see that there's a little red wire and the red wire is hooked to this pencil and that makes this guy positive and on the other side uh, the black wire is hooked over here so that guy is a little bit negative. Now let's go on and see if we can figure out what's happening. If we have a petri dish, <clears throat> let's say we have a positive wire and a negative wire, well what's going to happen? In the solution there is potassium ions, there are iodide ions, and there's water. So if you were a positive potassium ion, not surprisingly you would move over here to the negative side so you'd have potassiums over here and the same way the iodide ions would move over here so one of the things that can happen is the chemicals that you dissolve the solutes can move to the um, uh, two electrodes and perhaps go through a chemical change or there's going to be water present so the water could uh, be involved in a chemical change in each place now let's think about this for a moment if you have a negative wire then that negative wire has many, many electrons. So whoever touches that wire is going to gain electrons. And we know that when you gain electrons, that is reduction. And if it's reduction, we know that that's the cathode. And in the same way at the positive ion, it's positive because it doesn't have enough electrons. So whoever touches that is going to lose some electrons and we know that losing electrons is called oxidation and whichever electrode where oxidation occurs that's the anode so we have an anode and a cathode now either the potassium is going to change or the water is going to change either the iodide is going to change or the um, water is going to change so we need to look at this guy okay for reduction or look at water for reduction and we're going to do that with our reduction table so here we're talking about the negative electrode and as we just said a moment ago a negative electrode that's going to be a reduction so our reduction potential table here is going to help us out so what are we looking for we are looking for potassium so here is potassium getting reduced because all of these equations show uh, reduction and it looks like here is water getting reduced so the question is which of these two is actually going to get reduced and the idea is whichever one has the greater reduction potential that is going to be the one that gets reduced and this is not surprising because there's no way that we're going to make some potassium metal under water because we know that that reacts with water right away so this does not occur okay the reaction is going to be that water gains electrons and becomes hydroxide now let's go look at the uh, positive ion the positive side okay I should say positive electrode and that's going to be one where somebody loses electrons so that is going to be oxidation and as you learn <clears throat> this reduction pot potential table can also work as an oxidation potential table if we consider each of the reactions going in reverse and if we change the signs on all of our numbers so instead of this being a negative 293 at the bottom that would be a positive 2.93 so now let's look at this so what do we have? We said iodide could go over here. So iodide, iodide, iodide. Um, there it is. And we're talking about this reaction going in reverse. So the iodide ion would give off some electrons and they would be lost into the wire and form some iodine solid. So that could be one thing. Now we need to find a reaction with water on the right side. Here's water, but it's got SO2, so that's not the one we want. Here's water. And this is the one we want. Here's water, and it is getting oxidized, so we're looking at it in the reverse direction. 
So the question is, which of these two is more likely to occur? Well, the idea is if we're talking about oxidation potentials, we have to use this as a negative 1.23, and this has to be negative 0.535. So of these two, the iodine has the greater reduction potential. So the water is not going to be the one that changes in this case. Putting it all together then, we know at the one side here, okay, at the uh, positive side, then iodide is going to change. So the iodide in solution is going to pick up an electron and become neutral iodine. But we know that iodine is diatomic, so this whole thing has to happen twice. Um, that does not make sense. Let me go back a little bit. Okay, so our I minus, that was correct. Okay, it turns into neutral iodine and gives off an electron. And because the iodine is diatomic, then I need two of my iodides to do that. So that happens at my positive side. And at my negative side, we decided that it's the water that's changing. So water is going to gain electrons. <clears throat> now for this, in case we need to, we need to think of water as H plus and OH minus. And what happens is the H is what's actually gaining the electron. So the hydrogen is turning into neutral hydrogen. H plus is turning into neutral hydrogen. And we're getting an OH minus that's still left over. But we know that, again, di that hydrogen is diatomic. So we need two OHs. We have two electrons. And we have two waters. So at this negative electrode, okay, which is our cathode, because reduction is occurring here, then we can see what's happening is we're going to get some hydroxide ions, and those hydroxide ions with a little phenolphthalein is what makes all this pink color. Now you can also see, except for the fact I just covered it up, let me see if we can erase that, but there's a little bubble there. It's a little bubble of hydrogen gas as well. So we can see we're getting hydrogen gas and we're getting hydroxide ions by the pink color. On the other side, iodine <coughs> uh, does not dissolve all that well in water. If this were a nonpolar solvent, we'd get a nice uh, purple color. But what we're actually getting here is uh, uh, iodide mixing with uh, iodine and we're getting I3 minus which is kind of an orangey color at this concentration. So this yellowy orangey color is forming here. So that's what's happening at when you're doing a electrolysis of potassium iodide. Again, either the water can change or the ions can change and we have to go back and look and so forth that the negative electrode, our two choices are water and potassium and we can see that the water is much more likely to change. When we go to the positive electrode, the two choices are water, looking at this backwards, and iodide, looking at that backwards. And in this case, when we change these signs, the iodide is much more likely to get oxidized than the water. So those are our two reactions.